Right then. Sync clap to help us sync in post production. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a uh, exciting one because we're going to be talking about how to automate the process of filming a day to night time lapse. But I want to give credit where credit is due before we jump into this video. So I originally saw a video from Michael Thomas at the London Viewpoints, a good friend of mine, good fellow time lapse photographer from London. And uh, he came up with this, or as far as I was aware, came up with this program mode or this way or this method of actually shooting automatically from a holy grail. But for those of you who may not know what a day to night time lapse is or a holy grail time lapse is, let me explain. So as the sun sets, there's going to be an exposure change. So you can see that sun setting and it's going to become what's known as blue hour, which is the hour after the sun sets, so it dips below the horizon. And this is normally when you would get that beautiful red sky, also blue sky, depending um, on, you know, you slowly see that become nighttime and that process changing and showcasing that process in a time lapse is known as a day to night or a day or, or night to day depending on which time of day you're doing it so you're going to do these at sunrises and it's the other way around so instead of going to night uh, sorry day to night it's going from night to day and etc you can do the same with sunsets as well so now we are established on what they are i wanted to talk briefly about the process originally and then how the automated mode can help you specifically when it comes to actually capturing time lapses that and, and what the differences are and some pros and cons that i've personally found in testing it the last couple of weeks so the normal process of capturing a day to night time lapse there's plenty plenty of tutorials online so i'm only going to go over this very briefly and i will be revisiting the tutorial very very soon but to the brief terminology of how to go about day tonight. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to set your exposure as you would do normally if you're going to take an image at night for example. We'll do night to day instead of day to night but you're going to set your exposure to about four to five seconds so you can get that those uh, clean exposure as low as ISO as possible and as wide aperture as you can go on your lens. So in example this case on this lens I could go to f1.8. I would never recommend going that high because normally you are going to find it very difficult to actually focus at f1.8 because you have a very, very little uh, slither of focus at 1.8. So maybe go to f2, f2.2, something like that, somewhere around that. So then you're going to take an image and you're going to set your intervalometer between anywhere between 8 and 12 seconds or if you're using an inbuilt mode, do the same with your gaps between your photos. And then what you're gonna do after that is you're gonna let it run. So as the, as the process really happens and as you're there and as you go through that blue hour, it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're going to have to close your aperture down so it becomes a larger number, therefore making the iris smaller. And it's then going to allow you to then start and then you're gonna to have to ramp your shutter down as well because and known as ramping your settings so basically what you're doing is you're taking an exposure that was you know around the middle of exposure so around you know perfect exposure or sometimes one stop under exposed depending on what you want to do and depending on the scene so once you're happy and you've got your first exposure you're then going to start ramping your settings down so starting uh, with your shutter speed getting that down a little bit so i normally get it down to about one second or so only because then you have a more blackout time which is the time between each image and your autofocus uh camera is going to send an autofocus signal which means you can't use your camera or change your settings on your camera even if you are shooting a manual focus it's still going to send that auto focus signal which means you won't be able to change your settings so once you've got it down to one second you can pretty much let the intervalometer shoot as every eight seconds or every 12 seconds depending on what you're doing and depending on what you set your interval to be but then once you've done that you can then start closing your aperture down so making the aperture smaller and so you continue to have a correct exposure and then as you need to or as you needed to if you are a higher iso i'd always drop that lower so basically what you're doing is you're trying to keep the same exposure as the sun rises or as the sun sets so you have a similar level of exposure so depending on whether it's a sunrise or a sunset or depending on which way you're going to go so if it's for a sunrise you're going to start at the higher end in regards to shutter speed and aperture and then you're going to work your way down because the sun is going to it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter the closer you get to sunrise and then as the sun rises up it's going to get really really fast and get really really quick when it regards to the amount of light entering your sensor 
and if it's the subset, it's going to be the opposite side, if that makes sense. So if any other questions regarding Holy Grail, let me know in the comment section down below. And now, so how does the auto mode specifically help you that? So the auto mode that Michael came up with basically allows you to automate this process. Now, there's a couple of caveats here, and I would always recommend if you can to shoot manual, because what I found personally is, now this may be user error, but what I've found is normally when you use the neutral density filter, you can get your shutter to normally, you know, the half a second to three quarters of a second, or even one second from the daytime shots and the daytime shots you're really looking for. But personally, I've found that controlling it a lot more will allow you to have less blackout time because I personally found towards the end of a time lapse that's been automated or towards the end of that time lapse that's been automated that the images end up getting a lot darker. Now that might be because as I say the ISO in the cameras I'm using doesn't necessarily want to ramp as high but personally when I can I will always shoot manual because it gives you a lot more control of your shutter speed as well but it's fine it's the, the reason why the it's beneficial for auto mode or, or why the auto mode or why the program mode is actually going to be beneficial for you is for example say you set up your camera in a place which you want to shoot a holy grail from but you can't necessarily easily touch that camera or it would be difficult or it would actually shake the camera or it would mean that the time lapse isn't as perfect in regards to motion because whenever you're going to touch the camera you're going to possibly unless it's really locked down and really secure you're going to kind of knock the camera or in introduce movement or jitter into your time lapse which is not what you want when you want a time lapse specifically so you know if it's a subject or if it's an area which you may find challenging to also reach as well this is why i would always shoot auto um, specifically because you can easily well, semi easily set up the gear and then let it kind of shoot and then come back and get it afterwards or, or keep an eye on it etc over depending on what you're doing the pros as i say is when you can't really touch the camera you don't really want to touch the camera it's in a, such a place as you not being able to touch it Number two, when you're running, when you want to run a B time lapse, but you don't want to necessarily try to balance having to ramp two cameras simultaneously, which can be very stressful, or very, very you know, difficult to do. And then number three is when it's on a piece of equipment like a motorized slider or anything like that. So you don't want ideally to touch the camera at all when it's on a motorized slider because you'll possibly, no matter how tight you lock things down, it's very possible that you're going to slightly tweak or slightly push or slightly turn the time lapse or, or the camera which means it's going to add in some extra jitter and so on and there's already enough going on to get the time lapse to the point where you are happy and you are you know you're proud of it as a piece of time lapse content so you know and i'll be doing other videos talking about some of the other tips and tricks when it comes to specifically time lapse content and how to make it look better than just sped up video for example because i know there is a couple of people who do watch the channel who are interested in that specifically so there are those pros when it comes to those but also something which i found as i say is when you want to have more control and you are able to either whether that's remotely or just in general touch the camera and change the settings whether that's through qdr dashboard then i would always choose manual because it allows you to have a little bit more control and in my opinion it will allow you to you know shoot through or keep that shutter speed higher than you otherwise would specifically on the automated modes and the same would be true if you were doing a video specific time that's from an inbuilt mode as well so that's just kind of my thoughts on it i hope this wasn't too rambly this has been a nightmare to film um for whatever reason but uh yeah hope you're good hope you're well and uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and uh if you did enjoy this video make sure to leave it a like and i'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below remember go check out michael's video for a full-on tutorial on how to create this automated time lapse mode as well and i'll see you very very soon